Hi there, Black Bright back again, and I am broadcasting out of the UK, my um, second day at work, I think, and just getting over the jet lag, still feel a bit tired, but not too bad, um, my body clock is still out of whack, but hey, um, by next week I should be on top form, or peak form, so to speak, or God willing. Anyway, um, what did I want to talk about to you today? First, I wanted to thank my subscribers um, for supporting me. I want to thank people, new subscribers. I want to thank anyone who's passing by and who finds my topics interest and they decide to subscribe, like and share. So today, I wanted to talk about people who pay the minimum on their credit cards. A lot of people, they borrow on their credit cards and, you know, it is so easy to have a credit card, buy whatever you want from it, and sometimes when, you, when whatever you want is so expensive, you can only afford to pay the minimum. If you keep your purchases low and you pay it all before the end of the month, of course, you've got no interest to pay, you're well and good. You're not the type of person that lenders like to borrow to or like to have cards because they make their money on the interest. But there again, if the interest is not paying off the loan, they start getting worried. And I believe that with Brexit around the corner, they have brought in new legislation. And they are now saying that you had better be paying off more than the minimum that you are have been paying so far. So, in a nutshell, um, the financial, was it the Financial Conduct Authority, in brackets FCA, um, they have recently brought in rules to help customers. They claim they're helping customers who are borrowing on credit cards for a long time to make low repayments and who are making low repayments. So now they're starting to get worried. They're thinking, oh my God, you've got all these people. It didn't matter before because at least they were getting something in. But they know something we don't know. And they know that if they are, if you're just paying the minimum and they're not getting the, the main, um, what do they call it, the principal back, they're starting to get worried now that they may not get it back with what is going on after the 31st of October. So, lo and behold, they make out like they're doing us a favour. Well, doing those a favour, people who do only pay the minimum on their credit cards. And what are they going to do? They're going to put you under pressure. They're going to put you under pressure. They're going to start, if you don't start paying more than the minimum that actually pays off the principal as well, then they are going to create their own prepayment scheme for you. And if they do that, you know you're going to be under pressure. And because people who pay the minimum usually do it because that's all they can afford. And they may have made poor decisions, poor financial decisions, but whatever it is, they are paying back, I would think, as much as they can afford at the time. But however, if you've been only paying the minimum for two 18 consecutive months, they are going to suspend your card. And they are going to put a plan in place to make sure you pay back some of the principal. So if you're one of those guys, mate, you better start planning for this increase out of whatever income you are getting, because this is the way it's going to go. Anyway, um, if they've been in persistent debt, that is what they're calling it. So they're calling it persistent debt. I don't know why they didn't call it that before, but they're calling a persistent debt if you have been only paying the minimum for 18 months or more. That's what they call persistent debt. Um, oh, well, it's actually two consecutive 18 months periods. So suppose you've only been paying the minimum for 18 months and then you pay off a little bit and then you go into that minimum again, 18 months again. That is what they're calling persistent debt. And you notice this is all happening before Christmas. Everything happens before Christmas. Everything designed to make your life as, as uncomfortable as possible <laughs> happens before Christmas. Every, you know, things start going up. People start losing jobs, all that kind of stuff. 
Anyway, um, so if they've been in persistent debt for at least two consecutive 18-month periods, the banks or the financial authorities are going to be contacting you to help you find a way to pay down your borrowing more quickly in a way that is affordable. But the thing is, is that if it was affordable, you would be paying more, I would think. Not unless you are one of these people who just think, oh, well, it's just easier to pay the minimum. And why should you pay more than the minimum if you can get away with paying the minimum? And the thing is, the amount of interest you pay when you do it that way, you don't get rid of any of the principles. So it's not a very good idea. So, but if you are one of those people, you have to start rebudgeting and looking at your finances because they are changing the terms and conditions to introduce pay down plans. That is a plan to help you reduce the principle of your credit. What well, anything you've got, anything you've got on your credit loan, on your credit, um, whatever, on your credit card. It hasn't, I don't think it's gone to store cards yet. I think at the moment they're just concentrating on credit cards. So repayment plans with fixed minimum payments, which will allow customers to repay their balances more quickly. So what they're going to do is inc they're going to make you pay whatever you've been paying. I assume make you pay whatever you, the minimum payments. So suppose you've been paying five or ten pounds a month. They're going to introduce an element in that that helps you pay off the principal. So you'll be forced to not pay, say, for example, £15 a month. You'll be forced to pay £20 a month so that some of the principal is being, being paid off. Um, they'll also be able to suspend your card, like I said before, if you've been in persistent debt for at least two consecutive 18 months periods. So you're not even going to be able to have a credit card if this is what you have been doing or how you've been conducting your finances. Will that push you into poverty? Well, I'm not quite sure of your financial situation. I'm not quite sure. Um, I know lots of people, well, not personally, but I know lots of people who do pay the minimum on their credit cards and they think it's great. It's like when you take out a loan and they say, you know, you can have it over four years or you can have it over two years. And you think to yourself, oh, well, I'll have it over four years because it's only going to cost me like twenty uh, two hundred pounds a month. Whereas if you'd done it over two years, it might cost you five hundred pounds a month, but you would get rid of it within a shorter space of time. But you would take, I would think, the four years because you're thinking of your budget and you're thinking, well, I can only afford that amount of money on what I earn. So I think this is going to be quite invasive. I think it's going to be intrusive. I think what's going to happen is that people who have been paying the minimum and squeezing to pay the minimum are going to find themselves in a lot of trouble, a lot of financial problems. And if they've taken away the credit card, which might not be a bad idea, actually, um, you're going to be forced to use whatever money liquid cash you have so this is to stop their balance from increasing so that they can help them focus on paying it off yeah they're making it look as though they have your interests at heart but they really have their interests at heart and they are wanting their money back you are going to be finding after brexit a lot of more people are going to be trying to crawl back their money that you borrowed as quickly as possible because they know what we don't know. They know there's going to be a financial crisis and people are going to be wanting to get their money back and they'll be doing it any which way and they're not going to care about you. So just be careful with your spending, especially now. Don't buy anything that's unnecessary. You've got Christmas around the corner. Just invite people for dinner. Don't bother with presents. Don't bother with um, extravagance. You don't have to just, it's just another day for Christ's sake. Just do your normal roast. You might have a, and decide to have a glass of wine instead of buying lots and lots. You know, people, I've seen people when they go shopping at Christmas, it's like, it's the end of the world. It's like there's a famine. Well, not really a famine, because if there was a famine, they wouldn't be able to load up their baskets. But their baskets are so high. And it's almost like they're buying up the whole of the shop. 
for one day or say a couple of days over Christmas. And I think that now more than ever, people aren't even as sociable. I mean, back in the day, in my day, Christmas, people would be visiting people's homes, you'd have people coming to your house, and you always had food on tap or drinks on tap, you know, to welcome people in your home. And so for that reason, you would buy excess shopping. But that's not so much the case. And if it is the case, you still need to be careful. Even if you are expecting guests, just just try to be a bit more moderate. Moderate your spending and try to do what's best for you. Because when the shit hits the fan, peeps, and they start withdrawing and stopping this and stopping that, you're going to wish you had been more reserved with your spending. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.